How's it going everybody? I'm Newbie Dave and welcome back to my Let's Play Minecraft series. We're going to be doing a pretty safe local build today so I don't need my gear so I went ahead and put it up on display back there. Uh, just kind of free up our inventory a little bit. Didn't really want my shield taking up like half the screen and all these weapons and everything on my hotbar so that's why I put everything away. Also, it kind of looks cool. I, I did not intend for this to become like my display wall. It's just slowly turned into that over time, and I actually really like it. I was planning on originally putting like a bunch of hoppers and uh, smokers and blast furnaces and stuff over there, but I like it as a display wall a lot better. I think that's really cool. So what I want to work on today is something I've kind of been planning for a long time, ever since I started to build a little base over in this cave area. And as with a lot of plans and projects of mine, completely forgot about it until recently. I was like, oh yeah, I was going to do that thing. So what I want to do is I want to build, I want to do something with this area because it's just very plain. Like over here, we've got our frogs. Probably going to end up doing more with this side later, but at least we have something over here and it looks kind of nice. We've got nothing over here. <laughs> it's just very plain and boring. So what I want to do is a little bit of decorating. I want to put up some bookshelves, some paintings, some item frames with stuff in it. But more importantly, we're going to have a secret combination lock over here to get to all of our valuables. So that's the real, the real build for today. Uh, this is going to be a big redstone build, so there's going to be a lot of redstone components. And this is the sort of thing that is really good to do in like an underground area or a cave of some sort. Uh, something like this because it's going to take up a lot of space. I'm not the best when it comes to redstone. Uh, <laughs> I understand how redstone works and I can make it work, but trying to make it work in a way that is compact isn't really my thing. <laughs> I'm more When it comes to redstone, I'm more just make it work. Uh, so let's see. I, I want this to be centered actually. So before I start digging, let me actually count out one, two, whoops, not by actually breaking things. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I've come back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, cool. I did hit the middle. And it's not quite the middle because it's an even number, so there's gonna be like slightly more on one side than the other. But it's close enough to the middle. So what I'm actually going to start with is a couple of item frames. This will all make sense much later. Uh, let's throw an item frame, let's say right here, and we'll do one right there. And then let's get our sticky pistons. And um, we could kind of put these anywhere. Um, I kind of don't want them to be exactly centered I'm trying to decide where I want all this stuff to go yeah we'll put it right here I think it's not quite centered with our collection area like this is the middle of that so it's a little bit off center from that I think that'll be good so we need these to be two blocks back from uh, I guess one block behind the wall so that the thing that they extend will come out to this spot right here. We're not making a hidden door, okay? It's not a hidden door. It doesn't need to be flush with the wall. Uh, ultimately, we're going to put some bookshelves here, and so these are going to push out, and the bookshelves will be in front of the wall with several other bookshelves so that they all blend in. So that's why we want those to be there. And then I'm also going to start by just digging out a big, big area to work in. Because I really don't like working in cramped, confined spaces. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of wiring, a lot of redstone circuitry going on behind us, behind this area. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear a whole lot of this out. <clears throat> I'm going to throw this frog light up in the ceiling here to kind of light things up back here. don't really know quite yet if I'm going to leave that there. Probably not because I love my frog lights. So I'll probably just throw a couple torches back here when I'm done. All right. We need to keep the block that the item frames are on, but we do need to dig out uh, behind those a little bit. And 
And I think I've got plenty of space here before I punch through to... Uh, there's like a cave on that side of the wall. <laughs> oh look, it's raining. Yeah, this cave over here. I think I've... You can kind of see it, it It goes back more that way than that way, so I think we're good. I don't think I'm going to accidentally uh, break through into the cave. Let me just go ahead and sleep. Even though we're working indoors, it doesn't matter. I don't want to end up being awake for like six Minecraft days and then I go outside and get attacked by phantoms. <laughs> Yep, like I said, this is going to take up a lot of space. I'm sure some of you more brilliant Minecraft wizards out there can find a more compact way to do all this. I'm not going to worry about it because it's hidden. It's hidden. I'm not trying to fit this into like a building or something where it needs to be super compact so it doesn't really give it away. Uh, okay, next part. Let me clean up my inventory a little bit here. some of these too. Uh, we're going to make a, it's called an AND gate. Uh, that's a logical gate that turns on or off based on, excuse me, <clears throat> based on two inputs coming into it being the same. Uh, so this is what's going to power the sticky pistons. Uh, so what I'm going to do is some obsidian right here. This absolutely does not have to be obsidian. You could use stone, you could use dirt, doesn't matter. Uh, I just want to use obsidian because I think it kind of looks cool. So we're going to put two redstone torches on the side like that, and then we're going to put some redstone in the middle like that. You can now see both pistons are activated and extended. And so what makes this an AND gate is on the back side here, um, I'm going to do this temporarily just to kind of demonstrate how this works. Uh, get some more redstone torches. If we have a redstone source on this side, which isn't working. So if we have a redstone signal coming in on this side, it turns off that torch, but the other one's still active. And so this side is still on. If we have a redstone signal on this side, same thing over there, both of these have to be on for this to turn off. It's, I guess it's sort of more of a, a NAND gate, a not AND, maybe, I don't know. Point is, both sides have to be on for this thing to turn off. It's not going to turn off if just one or both of them are off. So that's, that's the point of this little contraption here. So this is what's going to keep the sticky pistons extended until we activate both sides. The way we're going to do that is with these item frames. So an item frame will actually emit a redstone signal when it has something in it. And the strength of that signal is based on the rotation of the item in the item frame. So I'm going to use a couple of flowers just because I'm going to end up decorating this whole wall with bookshelves and paintings and stuff. And so the flowers will just be part of the decoration. It's just going to be like, look at this beautiful thing I have on display. But then you can rotate each of these by a certain amount. And that's the combination. However much you rotate each side by has to be correct to open this thing. So let's start by putting a comparator. Uh, right behind the block that has the item frame on it. So right there. And actually, 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 I want these to be deep slate. I've said this before, I'll say it again, because not everyone has watched every single episode I've ever made. Which, let's talk about that. Why haven't you watched every single episode I've ever made? Come on, guys. Nah, just kidding. So, comparator right there. Um, yeah, what I was saying, I, I like to use different blocks than the environment for redstone stuff. So uh, blackstone or deep slate or like red concrete sometimes 
just to make it stand out, to make it obvious that, hey, this is not a normal block. So if I'm like doing some stuff over here and I break through and see deep slate, I know, oh, hold on, I'm breaking through to my like redstone wiring. I need to calm down. So yeah, you can see that this thing is already emitting a signal strength of one. And the strength of this signal, let me just kind of have the redstone coming around to, to illustrate this. The strength of the signal increases by one for each rotation. So as I rotate this three times, we can now see it's one, two, three, four. Go again, it's now five, six, and then all the way up to eight. So we can use this to, uh, to create a lock that doesn't become powered on until this gets rotated to a certain amount that we decide. So what I think I want to go for is let's do one, two, three on this side, and I'll come up with a different number on that side. So this thing should be emitting a signal strength of four at this point. So what we're going to do is one, two, three, four. Uh, I think this will be good. And then we will put a comparator right there. So the signal is reaching that comparator. We can see if I went one more out, it's not reaching it there. So we are getting the desired signal strength right here. <clears throat> let me let me go ahead and finish up this side of the circuit really fast. And I'm going to put uh, this thing here, this thing there. I'll do redstone, redstone. Actually, this needs to be a repeater because the signal coming out of this comparator, um, I believe it's going to be as strong as the signal coming in and we want to amplify it so that it's always max strength. And then we'll do a repeater here, mainly just so the signal doesn't like bleed over to either side, but based on stuff that we have next to it. So now we can see, let me pop this flower out, put the flower in, we can see that redstone torch is lit up as we rotate it once, twice, thrice. It now powers off. However, if we continue rotating, it stays powered off because the signal strength just keeps getting stronger. And so this side of the circuit is still going to be powered on even if we go past the whatever number this side is supposed to represent. So let's fix that really fast. The way we can do that is making sure that this comparator gets powered off when the signal strength is anything other than four. When it's greater than four, we want this to be powered off. We can do this by exploiting the fact that comparators in their default mode, um, you know, is a comparator. So it's actually comparing the signal strength coming in from the bottom to the signals coming in from the side. So all we need to do is extend this line of redstone by one more on this side and then run that into a repeater. So when the signal strength is four, we'll get one, two, three, four. It will light up the comparator and it hasn't reached the repeater over here yet. So this side will be active. As soon as it reaches five, if we go one more, this thing turns on, it gets a full blast of 15 uh, signal strength from the side, which will turn the comparator off. So let's see this in action. There's one, two, three, and it is now on. I rotated it three times, which is signal strength of four because the default orientation is one. Uh, if we go one more, it now powers off because you can see the signals finally reach the repeater over here, which is going to overpower the signal coming in from the bottom. So now, 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 this thing is only going to turn on when this item in the item frame is at one specific orientation. And we can control that by simply controlling the length of this part of the redstone circuit. If we wanted to make it six or seven, we just need to make this longer. All right, so there is one side of our combination lock. We're gonna do the exact same thing over here, except I want this one to be different. And the reason I'm using two, you could do this with just one. The reason I don't recommend one is for <laughs> security reasons. Uh, if you just, if it's just one, someone could just walk in and be like, oh, what's this do? And then pop thing opens and like, oh, I didn't even know that was part of a hidden door. By having two, especially if they're different numbers, 
you kind of have to know this is a combination lock and you kind of have to know the combination. Otherwise you've got eight times eight, 64 different possible combinations you got to try. All right, so for this side, we're going to do something almost the same, except we're going to make it a little bit longer. So we'll do comparator there. And this one, I want it to be, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go one more, seven. Yeah, just because this one's one, two, three, and so it's kind of pointing down and to the right. I don't want this one to be pointing down to the left. That's a little bit too matchy match. I like to do something that somebody might not accidentally try. <laughs> so we'll do seven. Uh, so let's see, that's going to be one, whoops, one, two, three. And I don't want this one to go like really, really far back. So let's try to kind of bend the bullet. We'll turn the redstone signal a little bit here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we can do our comparator there. We'll do a repeater there. And then this will be seven, eight on that side. So same thing we'll do, repeater there, redstone coming out. Oops, we need a repeater here to strengthen the signal. There we go, you heard the little pop of the pistons. They have retracted. So let's test this thing out. We got our two combinations. Any sort of orientation of these two flowers, not going to open this until we actually get the combination correct. It opens, anything else is going to make it close. See? Awesome. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So we're done back here, really. I'm going to throw down a couple torches so we don't get spawns back here, but I'm not going to bother trying to fill all this in because I'm never going to come back here again. Like if I wanted to, I could try to uh, close in the sides a little bit, but I've got redstone going out to every side, so I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to try to fill it in. What we are going to do now is fill in, let me get my frog light. Uh, the front here, turn it back into a solid wall. And I'm going to make this two blocks deep of stone that we fill this area in with. Mainly so that if, you know, this is a single player world. I keep talking about somebody else. I'm not worried about somebody else in this world coming in and exploiting this. But if you're playing on a server and you want to make something like this, it would be a good idea to not have a one block thick fake wall so that if somebody accidentally breaks a wall in your base, they see, oh wait, look, there's a whole redstone contraption back there. I wonder what's going on. All right, so we've got our flush wall now. So let's start decorating. Let's make all of this blend in. So let's start with some bookshelves. These are the two that are going to be opened by the lock. And so let's go ahead and open this thing. So what we're gonna do is put a secret chest below the bookshelf. And this can hold all of our goodies, our ancient debris, our diamonds, uh, dragon egg, anything else that you want to make sure nobody gets their greedy little hands on. Beautiful. And then we're going to throw some other bookshelves around it just to kind of, you know, make it blend in and not stand out that, you know, there's something here. I'll probably end up adding more. I think I want this to be like a whole bookshelf wall. Uh, let's also do some paintings uh, and some other item frames that have other things in them. Uh, let's do a big painting here. Oh, no. Well, no, not that big. <laughs> uh, let's do... Can we do one that's three by two? Do those exist? That's an item frame, not a painting. What? No, I guess we got two by two. All right, we'll do two by two. That's kind of a cool one. 
By the way, I am using a custom resource pack. I think it's called Better Paintings. Let me just check that really fast. Yeah, Better Paintings resource pack by Vladu11, shout out. So this is a really nice resource pack. All it does is it changes the paintings in the game because the default paintings are terrible. They're just no good. I don't like them. I don't like them. All right, let's get, uh, yeah, just some different size paintings on this wall to kind of make it all blend in. I want a, a really small one over here. I don't know what that is. It's like a coffee bean or something. That's actually really cool. If this were an outside wall, it could look like the outside, but since it's an inside wall, it looks a little bit weird. That one's actually really appropriate because one of the things I want to put in an item frame is a sunflower. So we'll kind of do that over here. And then maybe another item frame down here. Really just mix it up. Add a lot of variety to this area so that nothing on this wall really stands out. Uh, I think we need a little bit more lighting. Let's uh, let's get some more frog lights. Let's get one more. Wait, what happened? I had a frog light. Did I put it away? Yeah, I put it away. Okay. Just want to make sure I didn't lose it because <laughs> I, I can't afford to lose any of my frog lights, you guys. I've only got like a thousand. Um, let's do... I want it to be inconspicuous. I don't want... I don't want anything at all drawing attention to the two item frames that are part of our combination lock. So let's do... Uh... Actually, you know what? I think I can... Oh, I hate to break... Let's not break that. Let me see if I can go in behind it. Ah, oh, I broke it. <laughs> I think I can put a frog light behind it and then put a painting over that. Which I think will work. Yeah. But why was that? Oh, yeah. I, I always forget how to hang paintings to get the size that you want. That one's dumb. Let's get our nice rainbow field one back. Because I really like that one. There we go. Alright, so not only do we have a hidden combination lock, we've got a hidden light source. Nice. All right, I'll probably come back and like add more bookshelves, maybe a little bit more decorations. I don't know, do something, do more with this wall to kind of decorate it. Um, actually, I can do some of that now. The reason I say come back is because I don't, I don't know. I'm going to be playing this world. I'm going to look at it and be like, you know what that could use? That could use a shelf with a lantern on it. <laughs> and I'll come add a shelf with a lantern. So... Ooh, candle. Let's do candles instead of lanterns. And I think I've got a flint and steel. Yeah. Yeah, my point being, over time, I think I'll just gradually... Uh, actually, candles... Let's do candles here. Just gradually start adding stuff over here to fill it out, make it look good. I want this area to feel kind of like a library slash study, even though it's not its own room. But I think for now this is good. I think this is good. Yeah, it's certainly more vibrant than it was before when it was just four furnaces in a blank wall. Alright, so here we go. Here's our nice new little library wall. And oh, it just so happens that if you play around with some of these flowers in the right combination, boom! Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting that. Some of you probably were. Some of you were probably like, that's going to break, Dave. Uh, maybe if we move it up. That works. Okay, cool. I'm curious why that broke. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It shouldn't have sent a redstone signal into that block. Maybe it's just because one of the blocks that the painting was touching moved. I don't know. But yeah, we've got our nice little hidden 
combination safe here where we can put all of our secret valuables and no one will be any wiser that it's there. Very, very cool. All right. Well, it was kind of a short episode, but uh, that is going to wrap things up for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please hit that like button. And while you're down there, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notified of future episodes as they come out. Thanks, y'all, and have a great day.